Ryan Toys Review started out as a humble toy channel about a kid playing with toys, but that quickly turned into so much more. With the channel beginning to gain millions upon millions of views per upload, Ryan is now the face of a multi-million dollar company, Ryan's World, and the whole endeavor has proved to be extremely successful, having garnered over $29 million in 2020 alone. By this point, the channel has become a staple of kids' content on YouTube, and Ryan has become one of the highest earning creators on the site. The company boasts toys, video games, toys, multiple TV shows, and toys as well as several successful channels. Hey guys, it's your boy Combo Panda here, and today I am about to say the F word. <laughs> Last year I made a video about Race with Ryan, a car racing game featuring the Ryan's World brand and characters. Well, they recently released a new game, Ryan's Rescue Squad. The game was released in March of 2022, but the game seems to have mostly gone under the radar, with only one review on Metacritic, and today, I'm gonna see if this game is an improvement over its predecessor, or if it's somehow even worse. Welcome to Ryan's Rescue Squad. Okay, now's the part where you say something. Welcome to Race with I HATE YOU! LEAVE ME ALONE! Wow, look at this lively menu. After opening Ryan's Rescue Squaw Ope software update, the first thing you see is a banger cutscene to showcase the lore and story of the game. So basically, Ryan and the homies are playing video games, when all of a sudden, Ryan accidentally recites an ancient incantation and summons a hell portal that puts him and his friends into the game world. He's met by some evil people like Ryan but evil and hamster, and Ryan prepares to fight them, but instead, they choose to kidnap Ryan's friends and run away. Now I know it probably hurts to hear that Pack Rat is probably torturing your friends in his basement, but you shouldn't worry about that right now. We have bigger things to deal with. Something that's worth pointing out with the cutscenes is that they're somewhat reminiscent of the low quality nature of the security breach endings. I can only assume that's because the entire game probably had a budget based off of whatever they could find in between Ryan's couch cushions. We then find ourselves in the level hub, which takes place in some blank spaceship looking thing. As you can see, in this game you play as Ryan. <laughs> I don't wanna be Ryan. There are four worlds in this game. TOYS! PIRATES! PREHISTORY! AND SPACE! Next thing you know, we find ourselves in the very first level. And wow, this is definitely a video game. There are enemies, collectibles, and even purple egg things that are probably made of 98% lead. The kids in the sweatshops are eating good tonight. If they make a few more eggs, they might even be able to see their families again. So the main way to defend yourself in such an unforgiving environment is by beating the fuck out of these blobs. They're honestly non-issues though, since you can dash at them, ground pound, and even just jump on their heads to kill them. But by far the most effective method of dealing with these guys is to throw the aforementioned purple eggs at them. I like the fact that there's no throwing animation, so Ryan ends up looking like an empty husk brutally murdering any and all innocent beings that cross his path of destruction. The eggs always go exactly where you aim them, so there's little to no risk and challenge in lining up a shot, since it always goes exactly where you want it to. And even when you do miss a shot, it doesn't really matter, cause you could carry up to 5 of these things at once, with no limit to how many are spawned. Aside from these blobs, you also have to deal with other enemies, like pink trolls. And the deadliest thing you'll ever set your eyes upon... Colored pencils. For real though, if you fucking touch these things, you instantly perish. And that'll lose you a whole 4 seconds of progress when you respawn. Each level contains a varying amount of surprise eggs and Ryan dollars. Which is obviously a metaphor for Ryan getting his parents actual dollars. There are also the more plentiful sun coins, which are used in tandem with the mystery eggs to purchase cosmetics. After beating all the levels in a world, a portal in the ground opens up, and we can finally fight the boss of the world. So Ryan and his slave walk and they see the guy and he's all like, hey! And then Ryan and the panda bear walk towards him again, and then the man shows his lovely smile. So the boss fight is pretty simple. Robo Combo moves left and right, shooting boogers at you, and you have to dodge them. After that, he's then diagnosed with stage 3 dementia and forgets how to drive. So he lands, and that gives you an opportunity to jump on him. Something really annoying with this fight is that the little thrusters on top of the flying saucer have giant ass hitboxes, so you can die while successfully hitting him, which will send you right back to the loading screen with no warning or death animation. 
which in turn only makes things more confusing. So after beating the boss, we get another cutscene. Ryan opens the egg, just like you can for the low, low price of $60. And inside is Gus the Gummy Gator, formerly known as Choo Choo Gus. And we unlock him as a playable character. Welp, bye Ryan. After that, we make our way to the pirate world. While it looks stylistically different from the last one, you can see that most of the world consists of reused or recolored assets from the last world, like the enemies, or reused obstacles and mechanics, like the spikes. There are a couple new mechanics, however, like boats and cannons that cause life-threatening brain damage. You even got some boogers of your own, which you could throw at your enemies to give them a disease. Most of the levels in this world are nothing to write home about, but the fourth level is at least pretty interesting. It has you riding on a boat and going over islands. Unfortunately though, the game reuses this exact mechanic later on. There are also some underwater segments later on, but EW GROSS I HATE! After we beat all the levels, yet another portal opens up. So Ryan and the gangsters walk and they look up. And there's another Ryan's World trademarked officially licensed surprise egg that you can buy for another $60. But then that sweet, sweet surprise egg is grabbed by none other than BACKRACK! He giggles a bit and then threatens to destroy the Ryan egg. Now this is personal! What kind of monster would destroy a Ryan's World egg? So now it's time to fight Pack Rat. He attacks you by shooting boogers at you and moving left and right. Sounds a bit familiar. But the difference between Robo Combo and Pack Rat is that Pack Rat is a hamster and therefore doesn't suffer from stage 7 Alzheimer's. But luckily for you, you can give it to him with blunt force. All you have to do is shoot the radioactive purple egg at him, and then you could just sit back and watch as his mental state deteriorates in front of your very eyes. Then you could step on his head and win the fight. So then Ryan carelessly throws the egg he was oh so worried about before, and that summons a portal above Pack Rat, which he in turn flies through. Two bosses down, one to go. Inside the egg is a furry. The next world is prehistory. Now this is where I stopped giving a shit about collecting the eggs and instead I just focused on beating the levels. So this world features the same enemies as before, but recolored. Of course, there's also a few mechanics that'll definitely not show up later in the game. And for this world, it's falling platforms. Of course, the boat and the cannons from the last world are back, which means the pirate world feels even less unique. But that's neither here nor there. Something that slightly changes with the level design in this world is that there's a lot more verticality as you go through the levels. There's also a new feature here. There's a dinosaur named Sheldon that you can ride. Each of the levels have a part where you can go through a door and then you're riding the dinosaur. They feel really shoehorned in. Since the little stomping grounds are completely separate from the rest of the levels, it gives me the impression that it was probably something added last minute. Or maybe they had bigger plans for this mechanic. The dinosaur has this really annoying scream that you have to use to get all the blocks out of the way. And like the ground pound and melee attack, it completely stops all momentum for you to use it. And then later in the world, there's also a pretty interesting level. It has you jumping away as lava rises and you have to get away. Then it has you doing the exact same thing but from the side. Wait, what? At the end of the third world, we find ourselves faced by Dark Titan. But before I do that, I gotta make my boy Gus look iced out. That's better. The Ryan and friends stand in place and then Dark Titan is angry and then they do a staring contest. While you are trapped here, your channels are abandoned, open for new owners. What? Wait, no way. You mean- I can't say the F word anymore! So the Dark Titan fight is actually completely different from the other two. Dark Titan attacks you by moving left and right and shooting radioactive boogers. He then drops a purple egg which you can throw at him and then you beat him up. The only thing that actually changed is that now he breaks some of the ground between hits. Okay, so maybe it's the same as the other two, but that means we've already beaten each of the main villains in the game. It makes me think, what could the final boss possibly be? So Dark Titan runs away into his spaceship, and then Ryan and friends all get put into a cage, and then Dark Titan escapes through a portal. But luckily for us, our good pal Sheldon is back, and he breaks the cage and frees us all. We're now in the final world. Space. You start out in a space station type place and you need to make your way past death lasers. Later on you leave the space station and you can go outside. The lead up for this part was actually surprisingly well done. Having you go through the ship lowers your expectation and makes it all the more surprising when you leave and get to see the environment. Obviously there's still a lot of reused and remodeled assets, but the devs actually made the world feel more unique as low gravity comes into effect here. I actually like the low gravity mechanic in this world. The platforming on its own already felt a bit floaty in the other world so when the game embraces it, the platforming actually feels pretty nice. 
Because of the gravity change, this also leads the level design to be more wide open, as having tight levels would feel cluttered at this point. In these levels, the super cool gimmick is that there are these UFO segments where you have to shoot enemies and dodge lasers. These are fine, I guess, but the only things you have to deal with is a singular type of enemy that shoots forward and some reused lasers from earlier parts of the level. There's actually a mini game where you use the ship later on. You need to collect the sun coins while avoiding the meteors. The annoying thing here is that the ship has a tiny puny little laser and it moves super slowly, so if you move too far forward you're bound to get hit. After making our way through the final few levels, we finally make it to the final boss. As you know, we've already beaten all the three main villains, so the final boss can be literally anything. It can be a giant robot, it can be Susan Wajisi working with Koppa, the possibilities are literally endless! You fight each of the three previous bosses while dodging lasers in between phases. Okay, so maybe the whole game is just shit. Wait, what's that noise? <laughs> oh, where am I? <sighs> Fine. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Terror's Toys Reviews! And in today's episode, we're gonna open the GIANT EPIC OMEGA RYAN EGG! So this Ryan Egg comes with sticker? Mystery figure, mystery vehicle, and a squishy figure. Wow! Now let's open the egg. Wow, that's a lot of Ryan toys. Okay, so first up we got a uh, fucking Transformer Ryan. Wow, let's open the next one. All right, let's um. Okay. Oh my God, it's Ryan but King. No way. All right, next one. I, oh my God, it's Ryan but he's like a space Ryan. All right, two more. Oh, what the... Oh my god! It's the kid that the van kidnapped! He's returned! We found him! Alright, one more toy! Is that fucking Sheldon? Okay, now let's open this side of the egg! Wow! It's a bumper car! Wow! So now that we open them, let's play with our toy! Today is good day to be a millionaire! My name Ryan, I am Rich Boy. I'm gonna fucking shoot you to death if you don't give me all your fucking money. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I hate you. I hate you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. No! You will not kill the rich millionaire. I am superhero... Hero Ryan. Here. Remember, kids, hurting people is bad. No! Please do not shoot me! I'm small Ryan. I'm Ryan Charles. Um, hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Child. Yeah. Ryan, don't worry, I'm here to save you! Did I please you, Master Ryan? Oh no... Uh, okay, kids, before Ryan shoots me to death in cold blood, I need a weapon to defend myself! I hate you all. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, here's the gun! Okay, time to shoot Ryan! Okay, goodbye, Ryan. 
<gasps> oh my, what the fuck? What the? Ryan, is that you? Ryan? Ryan? Oh god, what the actual fuck? Ryan's rescue squad is definitely an upgrade compared to Race with Ryan. But not by that much. With the reused game mechanics, lack of content, and the game being generally overpriced, I really can't recommend playing it. Now, I can already imagine all the comments saying, But TE3R, Ryan Rescuing Squadron is for little children! You can't expect it to be good! Well, here's what I say. New Super Mario Bros. It's a game I was able to play and beat as a literal infant, and it still holds up to this day. It also works well as a game for both kids and grown-ups alike. Yeah, Ryan's Rescue Squad was without a doubt designed for kids. But when kids play video games, they're often playing with adults or their older siblings so that the game isn't as hard. But anyone over the age of 7 would be bored out of their minds playing this game. I don't recommend it, as there are way better platformers you could get for less than 50 smackaroonies. But hey, at least it isn't as much as the fucking Ryan egg. Jesus Christ, that price tag. Also, a lot of people wanted me to review Super Spy Ryan, and from what I've played, it's honestly just a mediocre mobile game. The cutscenes actually look good, because they have a budget of more than $8. The main goal in the game is just to get as many toys as possible, while also attacking the other team to steal their toys to add to your own. Wow, I love toys. There isn't enough content in the game for it to warrant its own video, so I'm just kinda stitching this onto the end of this video, just so I'm able to provide a review for the people who have been asking me for one. Also, Discord server and second channel exist, okay, bye.